Hi guys, we're back for another Thursday live here with Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio. Hope everyone's doing well today. Um, nice weather here today in Pennsylvania. It's an, a nice change of pace. It almost feels like spring is actually on its way. So we'll see, but it's still early, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a beautiful day today. Um, just been getting some work done um just enjoying it just enjoying it uh today we're gonna make a beautiful goddess bracelet now this is the one that i showed and i'll show it down below as well this was the one that was in the picture um a gold gold version um but we are gonna do a silver version today with some turquoise uh, beads and soft flex. So it'll be super fun and super gorgeous. Come on in, everybody. Welcome into the live. So uh, as far as tonight, if you guys didn't know, I'm going to be back on Jewel Loom School Live. I will be with Jules uh, tonight, and she is going to be featuring me in her small business uh, features. Um, so I will be popping in on there and I will be showing you how to make, um, a fun, uh, hexagon bracelet. That's right. Hexagon bracelet. So if you get a chance, stop, watch us tonight on the Jewel Loom page on the, um, jewelry making with Jewel Loom as well. And we will be looming a fun hexagon bracelet and having some fun. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera down here. And if you just give me a minute, I'm just going to share the live out while I have a moment here. And as you know, it goes black for just a minute. And then it will show the surface. There we go. We're there. So just give me a moment, please, while I do this. Okay, it'll be just a moment. We'll be right back with you. Just sharing it around. And if you are able as well, and you'd like to share uh, the live around, I would certainly appreciate it. And if you are watching the replay, of course, welcome in as well. Okay, guys. So today we're going to be making a goddess bracelet. As I said, this is one that I had made with um, the gold jump rings. You can do whatever version of it that you'd like. You can use <clears throat> any colors, any sizes. But the trick is with a goddess bracelet, and uh, this is something that is very important, you want to make sure that you're using the same size beads and the same size jump rings together. Okay. So if this is a an eight millimeter bead, I'm going to be using eight millimeter jump rings to go with it because you want to make sure that your beads are not going to go back through that jump ring. Or if you decide you want to use a six millimeter bead, you just need to use a six millimeter jump ring. So, you know, whatever size you decide to make, I mean, you could go as small as you want it or as large as you want it. But that is the biggest rule with the goddess bracelet is making sure that your beads and your jump rings are the same size. So let's get started here. What I did, guys, is I have a container of eight millimeter jump rings here that I have bought and bought and bought, excuse me, bought off Amazon. So I just took some time and I decided to go ahead and close those jump rings. You want to make sure that you do that ahead. It just makes the process a lot easier because a lot of times they'll come open sort of you know not maybe not completely but i don't know if you can see my camera won't blur but this one is slightly open so as always you want to take both pliers just for those that maybe have not opened and closed jump rings before and you want to make sure let me get this to stop blurring again 
that you are straightening that jump ring up front to back. Okay. You never want to pull your jump rings open side to side. It will warp your jump ring and it'll be no good. Okay. So that's basically all I did. I just made sure that all my jump rings were lined up that I wanted to use today. And then I just put them in a little cup. I see Debbie is joining us. Hi, Debbie. Welcome in, sweetie. Nice to see you today. So once you get um, the jump rings all lined up and ready to go, you can go ahead and start the process. I just have, as I said in the beginning, you're going to want to use the same size beads with the same size jump rings to make a goddess bracelet. So it doesn't matter what size you choose. Just make sure that your beads and your jump ring are the same millimeter. Okay. So I'm just going to take a little bit of beading wire here. Not a little bit. We're actually going to need a significant amount. So what I usually do just to be on the safe side, I measure out about 12 inches which is what i'm doing there on the side and then you're going to want to double that okay so once you get it doubled there you're going to cut the bottom off so that's about a total of 24 inches worth of beading wire that you're going to need you may not need it all guys but i always make sure to um always cut more, always make sure that I have more rather than less. So what we're going to do here first, guys, is we're just going to take one of these jump rings. This is just probably about a six millimeter or a four millimeter jump ring. And I'm just going to weave that on in between the two wires. Okay. Just like so. So that's going to give me a connection point when I go to put my, um, uh, clasp on. Okay. And you're going to want to keep your clasp to the side there. Now you can go ahead and put your clasp on. If you want to do that on this step, instead of putting a jump ring, go for it. I have gotten burnt so many times by doing that. So I just put a jump ring on and that's dangling between the two. And then I'm just going to slide on a crimp, even those ends up and then just slide on a crimp over both of those wires just like so and then i'm going to bring it down here to the bottom where the jump ring is and you can see how it comes together and gives you that little loop on the bottom i'm just going to straighten my wires out here and then all you want to do at that point is go ahead and crimp that okay just going to give that a good crimp just to make sure everything is held in place the way I want it to. And just then bend it in half because I like the compact look much better than if it's setting there wide. So there we go. We just crimped on a jump ring onto the end of our wire. So we have two double wires here now. We have one wire doubled. Yeah, words are hard. So I'm going to set my other jump ring, my crimps, and my clasp over to the side. So this is where we're going to start beading our goddess bracelet. So I like to personally thread on a bead first. Okay. So then that way, when we're at the end here, you don't have jump rings trying to slide over your um, crimp and your loop. It just makes it a lot easier if you just put a bead on first. So you can decide. I'm just going to dump these out here so they're easy to access. You can decide how many jump rings do I want between each bead. And you can do as many as you want. You can do um, just a single. You can do triples. You can do whatever amount you desire. So we're going to go ahead and do triples this time because that's what I really like the look of. So I've sh I've strung a bead onto one of our wires after we crimped on our loop. So now I'm going to take those double wires again. Hi, Miss Joan. Hi, Miss Joan. So glad to see you, sweetie. And I'm going to pick up three of my jump rings. And I'm going to slide those over the doubled up wires. Okay. Just like that. And I'm going to push that down. And you can see 
there how that looks then okay you've got your rings you've got your bead and using the colored wire makes it nice because then it's just going to accent your piece this is a good place to use um, your colored beading wire so then next what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take the opposite strand that I put the first bead on. So the first bead went on to this outside strand here, the upper strand, and now I'm going to put on a bead onto the other strand, just like so. Okay, so that is what we are working with so far. All right, so then we're going to take those two wires again, and we are going to add three jump rings hello becky thank you for joining us today take three jump rings and put those over the double wires just like so and we're going to move those down just like so all right so that is what we have so far and you can see how pretty that wire looks showing up between each and over top of each bead all right, so now we're ready for another bead. So we're going to go back to the top strand and we're going to add another bead. And we're just going to go up and down for these beads, adding these beads. You're going to go on opposite wires every time that you are working, putting your beads on. Okay, so you can see what we have so far. So now I'm going to add three jump rings over the double wires. Okay. And just put those on over the double and slide them down. Just as simple as that. And you can see how it kind of compacts up and then kind of gives you this really neat shape where it kind of goes back and forth with the beads. I really enjoy that with the goddess bracelet. So we're going to add on the opposite side that we added the bead. We added the bead on this upper strand. So we're going to put another bead on on the opposite strand here. Okay. So as I'm working, you can see I went top strand, bottom strand, top strand, bottom strand. And then the jump rings are going over top of both wires. Okay. So put three more jump rings on. All right, and now we'll add another bead onto the other strand. I know I'm covering that up with my fingers. That's not helping you very much, but that gives you where we are so far. So I was on this strand last time, so I'm going to go ahead and do the opposite strand and put that on, and then the double strand and add three jump rings. It just gives a really pretty look. I really have had have a lot of clients that really enjoy the goddess bracelets. They're simplistic, but yet they they're simplistic sort of to make, but they give you like a really nice finished elegant look when you're done, you know. So let's add another bead. We're on to the white on the opposite strand. It's all black for you. Why is it all black? Um, is every Can everyone else see okay? Let me know. Um, if not, Debbie, if you could go out and come back in, if you could try that, or maybe if you have another device, try it on there. That sometimes works. So I put that over double wires, my jump rings. And then we're going to add another bead. We're back on the green. Now I have these here because I, I didn't know if I was going to run out of beads, but I think I'll be okay with the amount that I have here. That's just one strand. So that is what we have so far. Is everyone else able to see the video well? Okay, so three more jump rings. Three 
tray and slide that on. And then another bead. One of these beautiful turquoise colored ones. Oh boy, all kinds of yay, I can I can see try refreshing. Oh good, good. Uh Ginger Jones says Ginger and I made goddess bracelets a couple of days days ago. Oh no, here she <laughs> typed it again. Ginger and I made goddess bracelets Tuesday. I used beading wire with uh one jump ring between beads. She used German style wire and put two jump rings between beads. Very, very cool. Very cool. So you can just you can use regular wire as well. I just prefer the beading wire myself, but explore it. Do you know, just like Joan. Go out and see what you can make. So we're putting on three more jump rings. And you can vary, like Joan said, you can vary your jump rings and you can vary your amount of jump rings. You can vary the bead sizes. So, But just make sure, as I said, your bead size needs to match your jump ring size. Okay. All right. So it looks like we have... A white one. Next. And then three jump rings. Okay. Then on the opposite strand. This kind of, these beads kind of remind me of sea glass a little bit. I think they're pretty. Okay, three more jump rings. That is coming together so cute. I'm really digging that. I like that a lot, guys. All right, turquoise. And then two, I do love the sea glass look, Joan says. Yes, definitely. It's getting like I'm getting itchy for spring and summer and all that. So I start breaking out. Like I always love pastel pastel colors, but especially this time of year, I am itching to get into sea glass and pastel beads and just light filling jewelry. Puts me in the mood, I guess, <laughs> for spring and summer coming. So can't come soon enough here in PA, that's for sure. I think a lot of you in the the southern states may be enjoying it a little bit spring at this at this time no luck here though we have a decent day today but it's been going back and forth like we would have we had a couple days that were like 70 degrees and then like it snowed big time the other day so you just never know what you're gonna get it's like kind of like a box of chocolates you just never know what you're gonna get for weather in pennsylvania so let's add three more jump rings and we're just going to work our way up here and I'm just making sure that everything is kind of straight and um, pretty even together the way I want it because if you're not careful, you can get these strands to be uneven on the end. And it's not the end of the world. It just makes the piece nicer if you keep everything kind of straight and organized. Okay, so do the bottom strand. Same here in Arkansas. Okay. We'll get there eventually, guys. You know, it'll be here before we know it. Lots of mud prints from the dogs for springtime, you know. <laughs> that is the only thing probably I don't like about spring is all the muds and when, mud. And then when you have dogs, it's just like 10 times worse. Because my, my floors, I have wood floors all through my house. And when the dogs come in, they um, it almost makes like a haze over the floor. So you have to like scrub the floors every day, basically. <laughs> 
So I don't go too crazy with it because I just can't. But um, I do have one of those little robot scrubbers that I love um, that I'll do in between like the main scrubbings. Hi, Terry. How are you, sweetie? Welcome in. So now we are on back to a green on that strand. And then three. Jump rings on double strands. All right, so we're getting there. I'm gonna just take this over to the side and give it a little measure. So we're at about five and a quarter. So we have a little ways to go because you basically, now you're gonna have um, your class to account for, but I usually have a seven inch wrist. So I usually will make my bracelet six, six and a quarter, um, just to give myself enough room to groove. But since we're not putting that clasp right onto the beading wire, we have some area to uh, play with because we can just add or subtract jump rings. Okay. Um, Terry. Oh, hi, Paula. Hi, honey. Um, Okay, Joan says, I just pulled up a live cam along the Mississippi River in Illinois. It looks like they are having a blizzard. Makes me more grateful for the mud only here. Yes, this is true, my friend. And Paula joined us. And Terry says, good here, waiting for the S word to start. Oh, no. Winter can leave now. I'm right there with you, girl. And Terry says, can I ask where you source your miracle beads? I have a heck of a time finding them and they are a favorite. Um, I don't know if that's what these are called. I just think these are like a matte sea glass type bead. I just got these at Hobby Lobby, but um, I do know that Jesse James beads, they, they put a lot of miracle beads into their mixes. It depends on the mix you get, but they do have some pretty miracle beads there. Um, I'm kind of honestly, I thought, I, I think I know what a miracle bead is, but, you know, everybody has different ideas in their head, but maybe this is what that's, you know, that may be called. But we're going to go ahead and put our turquoise on. I will check there. Thanks. So. You're welcome, honey. Um, like I said, they have a good variety there. Um, they do put the miracle beads in their mixes, and I always grab them up quick when they're in those mixes. I like to use them on stuff. <clears throat> so I'm putting three more over the double strand there. We're getting there, slow but sure. And then one bead on the top. Three more jump rings over the double strands. Whoops. And then we're gonna put another bead on and at this point I just keep measuring until I'm sure um I'm where I need to be so I'm just going to take this back here and just measure it again and it's pretty much about six inches so I think what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and end it there and then I can add on my clasp and end our piece here so what i'm going to do with these double strands i have bought, bought the beads trisha is using at michael's i bought mermaid miracle beads at hobby lobby this week in blue someone said they buy a lot of them on amazon okay there you go and i'm just going to put over both strands of beading wire i'm going to put a crimp tube over top of that and slide it down okay and then i'm going to take one of these strands and put it around the jump ring that i want to be on the end of the bracelet just like so and i'm going to string that end of where we put the jump ring back down through the crimp 
Okay, so basically, in essence, now there are three wires going through this crimp on the end. So you always want to make sure you're using a number three two or number two tube or higher because or bead crimp bead if you prefer those. I'm a I like tubes, but that way then you know you can get your three strands through and you don't have to use double crimps on the end because to me that doesn't look very nice. But your choice, of course, you do you, and I'm just kind of adjusting this loop on the end to be about the same size as this loop on the opposite end because it just looks nice it just looks nice when you do that so I'm just going to take my crimp pliers and now that I have all three wires running through there one sticking up one sticking down at this point I'm going to take my crimp pliers in and I'm going to crimp okay if I can get that jump ring out of the way go I'm just going to give that a good squeeze okay and then I'm going to go ahead and fold that over just like so all right so we have these two strands sticking out here and we are good to go I can tell that my crimps are holding well there and I'm just going to take my cutters in and I'm just going to I'm not one that strings beading wire back through I just don't because for years I did that and they end up coming out no matter what you do and they poke somebody. So I am of the school of Kelly from Kelly's Bead Boutique. You just cut it back. Cut it back because it's not doing any good in there anyway through those beads. So I'm just going to take my cutters. I'm going to pull on the one strand of beading wire. I'm going to put tension on that and I'm going to press in with my cutters against that crimp and I'm going to snip and the reason you do that is because then you have less of the end of the wire showing okay and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side I'm just going to push this actually I'm going to grab it with my pliers and bring it over to the other side because I think it'll be easier to clip over here I can get a hold of it Oh, yeah, I'm just going to bring it over to the other side because I'll have a cleaner cut if it's right up against the crimp, if you know what I mean. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull the wire. And we're cutting on the top side of the crimp at this point. And I'm just going to pull the wire and push my cutters into that crimp and snip. So now we have a very clean bracelet. So we can decide at this point, is this going to be long enough if I just put my clasp on here? This will be about a seven without the clasp. So I think width will probably be okay. But you can um, add more jump rings at this point if you need to extend it out a little bit. But like I said, the reason I do this where I put the jump rings on the end is because I've gotten burnt a lot of times with goddess bracelets thinking that I had the right size uh, or the right size and I had wired the clasp right onto the beading wire and it just doesn't work out and then at that point you either have to cut your clasp cut your beading wire and do it all over so this is my little to get through that my little trick to get through that just put your jump rings on so I'm just going to take my jump ring here on the end and I'm going to open it up and add my magnetic clasp. You can use any kind of clasp on here that you like or that you have in your stash. And I'm just going to close that up. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And just hook that clasp into that. Just like so. Now on magnetic clasps, I always put safety chains. So I will grab my safety chain in just a moment and explain that to you. But that is the basic bracelet. Okay. You have your jump rings that are hooked into your clasp. I don't know if this will go around my wrist, but um, it should. 
and you can just hook it on like so and if again if this doesn't go around my wrist what can i do i can add more jump rings so all right so let's grab some chain and we will put the safety chain on so i can show you how to do that just give me a moment Okay, guys, so I don't know about you, but when I put safety chains on magnets, it can be quite annoying because normal, normal chain will stick to your magnet and drive you insane. Well, my brilliant dad, he is, and, and brilliant is the word for him, believe me. He, he knows a lot and he can, if he can't fix it, it can't be fixed, basically, <laughs> is what it comes down to. He and I were discussing it one day because sometimes he'll help me with um, problems I'm having with with beating, you know, as far as, well, this isn't working, you know, what else could I do? He suggested that I use aluminum chain because he says the, the aluminum will not stick to the magnet and he was right so i just went online and i bought like a variety of aluminum chain it's pretty inexpensive um, because it is aluminum um but it will hold the um bracelet from completely coming off your wrist if the magnet pops okay so i'm just going to reach in here and i'm going to get a piece of silver aluminum chain I just love that trick. My dad, I just, he's a sharp guy. He'll, he's the one that will like sharpen my tools for me and something I think I have to throw in the garbage. I'll be like, oh, I can sharpen that. No problem, honey. So <laughs> he's a gem. So I'm going to measure out about two and a half inches because I have found that two and a half inches is about the ideal size for a safety chain for an average woman's hand. So I'm, I have my measure down here. You can do two and a half to three inches. It's your choice, of course, but I kind of like the two and a half, like I said. So as you can see, here's our magnet. Our chain is not sticking to it at all whatsoever. So super cool. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab a couple small jump rings. Just, I have a couple oval ones here, some small ones, maybe about four millimeter. Okay. And I am going to get my chain nose and my tweezer nose pliers. And I'm going to open those up. Okay, just like so. I'm going to add on my aluminum chain. And then I'm going to string that jump ring through the jump ring that we have already hooked into the piece. Okay. Just like so. We're going to close that up. And then I'm going to open the second one up and do the same thing on the other side go through the chain i might be mad keep sliding and then through the jump ring okay and then close that up just like so all right so that's um your safety chain and it does not stick to your magnet so super super fun also, on the one that I made, guys, I did add some charms. I added the charms further away from the magnetic clasp, though, rather than putting it, say, on this end of the wire. I moved it inside of the um, beading wire on the other side of the crimps, okay? Because then that way it's not sticking to it all the time and, and stuff like that. So if you want to add charms, I highly recommend that you do it. A little ways away from your magnet so you're not dealing with that all the time but I think the charms look really cute on it I do like them I actually think I have a little turtle over there let me grab that and we'll put him on that'll be super cute I just came across him the other day and he's like in my little bowls on my 
desk here. Does anyone else have bowls on their desk that they just keep odds and ends that they come across? See, these are my little. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's cute. Oh, here he is. That little turtle was made for that, I think. So let's put him on. Oh, that'll be adorable on there, I think. Don't you guys? Becky says, that's what I need to do for jewelry I make for myself because the only clasp I use when making my jewelry is magnetic clasp. Yeah, it, it is a game changer. It is definitely a game changer. So I'm just going to simply grab a jump ring. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, as Jules would say. And I'm going to open that up. And hook it into our little turtle charm. He is just adorable. I have no idea where I got this, but I use an eclipse gum container. That's a good idea, too. I got I have been so blessed that my friends have all blessed me with beautiful bead bowls. So I use my bead bowls as much as possible because it, it just brings me joy and it reminds me of my my beautiful friends. So here. He is. Isn't he cute, guys? I'm super excited about it. It goes so well with the sea glass effect, I think. Super excited about him. <laughs> Just a really cute, quick, easy project that comes out, you know, really pretty. You can you can sell in your shops or make for gifts for family members. You know, Mother's Day is coming up, of course, in May. And I know I made one of these for my mom one year, and she just loved it. She just loved it. So that's a thought. If you have a mother or a mother figure in your life, this might be a good go-to for you. Thank you. Jen says, adorable. I love it with those beads. And Paula says, love the blue. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to turn our camera around here, guys. Just a quick one today, just to come in and... Have some fun and share some love. It's always great to do that. If I can get my cameras to go back. There we go. <laughs> there we are. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this. There are projects I make sometimes that, but I really love these. I, I just really love goddess bracelets and how you can personalize them with the charms and you have your magnet, so it's easy. So if you have someone older you want to make one of these for, it makes it so nice. And I say older, but I like um, magnetic clasps myself as well. And you'll see I have a couple of them actually on my wrist for different bracelet. And there's my safety chain on my check glass bracelet. So I practice what I preach. That's for sure, guys. So, oh, thank you, Joan. Joan says, catch Trisha tonight on Jewel and School. There's the link for that. Yeah, guys, stop over. We're going to have some fun. Um, let me give you a sneak peek of a cool project just real quick because I don't want to take anything away from Jules. But this is what we're going to be making tonight, guys. On the loom. Back to the loom, guys. So be sure you stop over tonight and visit Jewel Loom. And we will have some fun again tonight. So for now, I'm going to sign off. I hope you enjoyed our project today. Yes, I love it too, Joan. Thank you. And I'm so excited to be over there with you guys. I hope you'll be there tonight too, Joan. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Uh, it was a super fun project. And I'll see you later on the Jewel Loom page. Bye, guys. <laughs>